Now that you know how to create paths as a resource in your resource tree, we can learn how to implement them into a game. Now here I've got two different paths and they'll come into play as I show you what I'm doing. Path one, if I make this larger for you, I'm using the background of a selected room, just room zero. And I've created it here with a few points and I've got it curving so it's smooth instead of straight and my little object player he'll just follow it and when he gets to the end he'll come back nothing special and path two starts where path one ended and will continue on back to where path one started let's take a look at my player object now inside I've got a few things in his create event I've got some variables that have to do with starting a path I'm setting his speed, that's how fast he'll move along a path, relative to the speed of the path. If you remember the speed right here, this is like a percentage, so he'll move at 100% of 4, or just 4 really, it's the whole number. Then we'll have various end actions. I've listed them down here for you. 0 means end the path. Once your object gets to the end of the path, he just stops moving. 1 means continue the path from the start, so he'll just jump back to the beginning and it kind of looks a little jarring. This of course is if it's not closed. If it's closed it'll continually loop through the path no problem. My paths are open which means that the last point does not meet the first point. I have not selected a closed path. A2 means to continue from the current position. So that means that, let's take a look at this, once my object gets to the end It'll continue again from here as if the path just keeps drawing itself continually and continually drawing itself. And number three is to go backwards. So when it hits the end, it just reverses direction, which is the one I'm going to use as I've denoted here. Absolute means whether or not your object should follow the X and Y coordinates of the points as laid out in your path or to follow it as if it's drawing it from where it is in the room. So if I say absolute yes, that means follow it as is. This guy will jump up here and start following the path. If I say zero, false, he'll still follow this path, but he'll follow it as if the first point starts where he is, and then he'll move along it down here. So let's see how all those numbers work. Inside my step event, I've got a few controls for my room. One will restart the room. That's me pressing the R key. One will toggle whether or not I can draw some sort of debug stuff for you guys to look at. And then I've got start a path and end a path. These are really the only two things you need to concentrate on for making some object follow a path. Path start starts your path and it needs four different arguments. The first one is the index of the path you want it to follow. So I'm using path one the speed at which you want it to follow the path, so that's in pixels per step, the end action, I've chosen number three, so when it hits the end it'll just reverse and go back through the path, and then it's absolute, whether or not it should follow the path from the absolute x and y coordinates of each point, or to follow a path as if the first point starts where that object is at the time it starts the path. And then I can press the E key to end the path. So this means he'll just stop following the path and just stay stationary where he is or do whatever else you have written in your code. My guy's just going to stop dead and do nothing. Right now it's probably best if we just take a look at the game so you can see just a base level of what it's like to follow a path. So here's my room and I've got my object sitting right here. And now I'm drawing out the path and the points. Now it's not going to curve with the path that I've created in path one. If you remember, it's not straight, it's smooth, so it's curved. I'm not gonna draw it that way, I'm just drawing it straight. So if I press the S key, there we go. My object will jump to the first point because I said yes, absolute, true for that. And then when he reaches the end, he'll reverse because I've chosen number three as my end action. And he'll just keep doing that until I do something else, like hit the E key, to end path. If I hit S, he'll jump to the start again, so I can keep doing that. And that'll come in handy for me showing you the different ways you can now manipulate the path either before your object starts following it or while it's following it, which can produce some very strange results. 
There are a lot of different things you can do with paths, so I've split them up into three different scripts. One I've called manipulation. This manipulates the actual path you've drawn. Then I've got setters and getters. This will set certain variables for your path or get certain variables from your path. And then just variables that are built into GameMaker that you can use to either check things or to set things, similar to get and set, but these are functions and these are variables. Now the first thing I want to show you is the manipulation script. Everything is commented out so it may be difficult to see, so I'm going to uncomment as we go. Now the first thing I want to deal with is path resources. This is a dynamic way to, while your game is running, change the actual resources in your resource tree. The first one is how to add an empty path and then return its index. So this is the function path add. This is like when you right click here and say create path. You're doing it dynamically as the game is running. This will return some sort of value, some sort of number that GameMaker uses to identify that path. So you're going to want to store it in some sort of variable and then you can call upon it later so you can add points to it. So in this case I'm adding it to a variable called new path. The next one is delete a given path. This is just path delete and it needs one argument which is the index. Now in this case I'm using the variable new path so I'm just deleting the one I just created which that's useless but you can delete the ones that are already in your resource tree or any of the ones you created using path add which can be important because paths added dynamically sit in memory. So if you're not going to use a path anymore for the rest of your game or not for a while you can always just delete it this way then just bring it back again when you want it again so that your game's not bogging down the memory and it runs a little more efficiently. The next one is path duplicate. This will duplicate any existing path and then return its index. So you're going to want to store that in a variable. So path duplicate, here we go, it needs one argument, just the index. I've chosen path one and I'm going to store it in a variable called second path. So what it does effectively is takes this path and all of the points, all that information, and stores it into a variable because you're not going to see it in GameMaker when your game is running. At that point, just like adding a new path, you can manipulate any of the variables, any of the attributes to this path to change it so it's not exactly the same as path 1, and there you go, you've now got a new path. A second way of duplicating a path is actually using something called path assign. Now this won't return an index, so it may not be best for creating a dynamic path and putting it in here, but you can duplicate paths that already exist in your resource tree once your game is running. So what you do is you type in the path you want to have something duplicated to, and then you want the one that it's duplicating from. So what this will do is take all of the points and all of these attributes of the points of path 1, and copy them into path 2. So for instance if path 2 were blank or if you just wanted to take any of the points out of here or and perhaps all of them you would then put them into path 2. Something to keep in mind though if path 2 had any points in it they will be deleted and then overwritten by all of the points you're copying over from path 1. So it's Kind of not the best thing to do necessarily, but hey, it's there if you need to use it, you may find a good use for path assign. The last thing I want to show you that has to do with path resources is called path append. It's a little similar to assign, and it has a little more to do with editing points, in the sense that you put in one path, and your second path, and what happens is GameMaker will take all of the points inside this path and dump them in the same coordinates onto this path. So similar to how it would clear out this one and dump all the points into here, this one will keep all the points and dump all the points into here. And just how it would delete the points that were in this path, it's now going to delete the points from this path. Which means this path will now have all of its original points and all of the new points it took from path 2. But now path 2 will be completely empty, there won't be any points in it, which is why you should make sure to delete this second path, especially if it was dynamically created. Or you can use a dynamically created one from the first one, take all the points from one of those paths, dump it into here, then just delete this path. This will free up memory because you don't want an empty path sitting around not doing anything for you. 
now that path resources are out of the way, we can get into some really cool kind of like nitpicky stuff about how we edit the points. This first one I've got is path add point. So this will add a point to one of your current paths. So I'm using path one. If we look down here, we need an X and Y coordinate, and then we need to give it a speed. So remember, this is sort of a percentage on how fast the object should move relative to its own speed. I have it set to four for my object, and I'm setting this point to 100%, so it'll still move through this path at a value of four. This function will add a point to the end of the path, and I'm gonna do it at the mouse X and mouse Y. Now, how I'm going to do that is inside this player object, I've got release space. When I do that, it'll call this script. So when I press space, Everything's commented out except for this one line. And if I press space, a new point will be added at the mouse X and Y coordinate. So let's see what that looks like. So here we are, we've got our path and our object. This is the last point. If I press the space bar, there we go. It's like I'm drawing new points to this path. Of course, I can have my object follow through it and he'll keep his steady uh, four pixels per step movement because I set these to 100%. So here he goes. Still curving along, hits the end, goes back. Of course, I can do this dynamically while he's running this course, but you'll see him jitter. See how he jitters, kind of? He's recalculating his path as I'm adding it. This is one of the reasons you probably do not want to manipulate a path while an object is following a path. You might want to do it before or after, really just when he's not following it. Another thing to keep in mind is that if I restart the room, the path is still exactly the same because it has nothing to do with the room. It has to do with what's inside the memory. And this is what I've written to the memory. Keep that in mind for the rest of these manipulation functions. It's all well and good that I can add a point to the end of the path. But what if I want to put it somewhere in between my path? Well, that's path insert point. Once again, you pick the path you want to use. Then you pick one of the points. This is similar to any kind of array where zero is the first number. So my first path point, this one, is zero, then one, two, three, four, five, all the way through. And I've chosen point three. So this will insert a new point, calling it point three, which means now point three, the old point three, will become point four. And everything after that will increase by one. So Point 0.4 becomes point 0.5, becomes point 0.6, and so on. And I've chosen I random. This is just going to return a random integer, so a whole number. Anywhere that's my room width for the x value, and anywhere that's between my room height, 0 and my room height, and it's just going to pick anywhere in the room. And then you have to pick the speed. Now this time I'm going to do 300, so this will be 3 times 4. So as my object approaches that point... He'll gradually ramp up in speed to that new speed, which is four times three, and then follow throughout the rest of the path. So let's just see what that looks like. Here we are. We're back in the room. Same path, same object. So what I can do if I hit the space bar now is create a random point. So zero, one, two. This is my new point three, and it's gone in a crazy location. Now you'll see that as my object ramps up to it, there he goes. He's doing 300, and then he cools back down, back down to 100% of his speed. Now I can just keep hitting the space bar and just go wacky with it, and he'll just go all over the place following all these random points, which you'll probably want to create specific points in your room when you do this, but I figured this was the most fun way to showcase it. So I've got all these crazy points, and maybe I don't want them. That's not a problem. You can dynamically delete points by using path delete point. Simply just tell GameMaker the index of the path you want to use and then which point you want to delete. So let's see what that looks like. So here's my room again. And if you remember, this is point zero, then one, two, three. So if I hit the space bar, that one got deleted and it just attaches them again. I can do that while my object is moving through it, but weird results will happen. You'll have to keep aligning himself. Now, of course, I can keep doing that until there are no more points. I don't I don't have a point three to delete, so GameMaker just ignores that. Now he's following this really boring path between zero and two. But that's how you delete points on a path.
Now, sure, we could always delete a point and then add a point back just to pick a new location, but a better way to do it is to use path change point. This will choose one of the points along your path and then change any or all of the attributes. So we pick our index again, which is path one. Then we pick the point we want to manipulate. I'm choosing point zero, the very starting point. You can choose a new X coordinate, a new Y coordinate, and even a new speed for this point. So I've chosen 320 and 320. My room is 640 by 640, so this will be dead center. And it'll change the speed to 25%. So he'll now move at a quarter of his speed, which is one pixel per step. And let's see what that looks like. So here's my room again. If I start my guy going along the path and I press the space bar, I've now moved 0 0.0 to the center point here. Now the problem is, look at this. Look at that. It's like he's not absolutely following anymore. It's like he's relatively following the path. This is why you don't want to manipulate a path while an object is following it. Strange results will happen. The last thing you can do if you're completely fed up with your path is path clear points. This will delete every single point in your path. So only use it if you really need to clear everything because then I guess you're going to have to draw all those points again. I don't need to show you this one. If I press the space bar, all of the points will just go away and my object will stop dead in his tracks. Nothing really special. Now it's all well and good to edit individual points, but what if we want to edit an entire path all at once? Well, we can do that with a few of these functions. One of them is called path flip. All you have to do is tell GameMaker which index you want to flip, and it'll flip the path relative to the center point. So I believe that's between these two points, somewhere in the center. So there'd be center between this point and this point vertically, and then between this point and the very bottom point horizontally. Now, flip is going to flip it along a horizontal axis. So that's like if an, an imaginary line was drawn here, it would flip it this way, top and bottom. Now, if you want to do it with a vertical axis and flip it left and right, that would be path mirror. So one will do horizontal, one will do vertical. It's a little complicated to remember these two terms because, hey, it's mirror and flip. They could really be either one of these. But we'll take a look at them and see what they look like when we actually apply them to a path in a game. Okay, so we want to use path flip this time. So that's going to flip this way, up and down, as if there is a horizontal line here, some magic invisible horizontal line. So if I press space, there we go. My path now starts here and goes this way. Once again, it's going to be weird if my player's following it, because if I flip it, now he's somewhere outside the screen, still following this path, but he's going to follow it relative to where he is rather than absolute. If I flip it back, hey, there he is, he's back on the path, but now he's gone. Hey, there he is. So he's still following the path as if it's going way off screen this way to the top, where it's not supposed to be doing that. So remember, manipulate your paths when things are not following them. Of course, this same thing would happen with mirror, except it would flip left and right instead of up and down. Another thing you can do is reverse your path. This will make the path look exactly the same in your room. However, it will reverse the order of the numbering for your points. Let me hop into the game and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's my room, same path, same everything. If I start my object, he moves from point zero all the way to my final point. So let's stop him for a second. If I hit the space bar, nothing visually changes. But now, this is the, my starting point. This is point zero going this way. So if I press S to start my player, he now starts from this point. There we go. It's just a way of reversing the ordering of the numbers for your points. Another thing we can do, and it's a little more important to do it when objects follow a path absolutely instead of relatively, we can do path shift. Once again, you take the index of the path you want to affect, and you just shift it. So we're moving all of the points together in tandem, a certain amount on the x-axis and a certain amount on the y-axis. Now, positive numbers go to the right and down for x and y, and negative numbers will go left and up. So let's see what that looks like when I run the game. So here we go, nothing special again, but if I hit the space bar, my path is now shifted 30 pixels to the right and 65 pixels down. If I start my little dude, he follows it absolutely, but if I shift it while he's on it, 
he's still following the path as if it's here until I end it and start it again and he'll go down there. So that's what it's like to shift a path. The last thing you can do to manipulate a path in its entirety is path rotate. Just put in the index of the path you want to affect and the degree. This is the angle. So if my path looks like this, right? Let's see if we make this a little bigger. If I want to rotate it, all of the points will rotate counterclockwise as I increase the angle. Remember that in Game Maker, zero degrees is to the right, and they increase counterclockwise all the way around. So if I use a number like 90 degrees, my path will rotate around its center point in a perfect 90 degree angle counterclockwise. And it's best to just show you what that looks like so you understand it visually. Boring old path again, nothing special, but if I hit the space bar, I've now rotated my path 90 degrees counterclockwise around its center point. And I can actually keep doing that if I wanted to until I'm back to the way I had it before. Once again, don't do it while your guys are on it because they start following it relative to where they were, but it, it's a little bit of a mess. But that's how you rotate your paths in their entirety. Now let's move on to the setters and getters. Now I'm not really going to show you much about this because it's not really visually interesting to get values, but I am going to explain it to you. Now you only get three setters. So I've got path set closed. If you remember from the pathing tutorial, you've got different options over here. This is what you're setting. This is what you're going to be manipulating. Now closed checks whether your final point and your first point should close off or they should just end wherever they are like that. So while your game is running you can pick one of your paths and just set it to true or false whether you want that toggled for close to be true or false. Nothing too complicated there. You can also set the path kind. Once again you pick the index and you pick the kind. This sets the kind of connections of the path with the given index. Now kind is listed over here with straight, so we have very linear lines from point to point, or smooth curves. So this is either the number 0 or 1 for straight or smooth. And this one is setting the precision. Now this is a number anywhere between 1 and 8. It doesn't start at 0, it starts at 1. And this is how curved your curves are. Uh, to get that more visually, you can go to my path video, or I can set them here by saying 1, so it's all jagged, right? All the way up to 8, making it super smooth. It's all up to you on how precise you want your curves to be. After setters, we have getters. Usually this is some way of detecting something uh, about your path so you can um, proceed with the rest of your code based on that information. For instance, you can path get closed for one of your paths. This just tells you whether it's true or false, whether it's a closed path or not. Sometimes this is important when you dynamically change a path. You may not know or remember if it's closed or not. Which, of course, you can always use getters in conjunction with setters. Say, hey, get path, and say, hey, is it closed? If not, make it closed. You can also get the kind, which we just talked about. This is getting the length. This is really cool. This returns the length in pixels of a given path. This isn't even an estimation. If we check the Game Maker manual, it even says the, you're going to get the exact length in pixels. It's not an approximation for the length from point to point. Rather, an exact length along the shape of the path, even if it's smoothed with the highest amount of curve precision. So... That's a really useful thing to know exactly how many pixels you'll be traveling through a path because you can decide on the speed or, you know, like your object will be moving at so many pixels per step and then you'll know when it'll hit the end of the path or whatever. It's just a really useful way to know the length of a path because there's really no other way to know that. Path get name just returns the name of the path right here as a string. So you can store that in some sort of variable. And then if you want later, print it out to the screen for debugging or, or if that's necessary for the player to know this information. It's just a way to get your resource names into here. The next thing you can do is path get number. This returns how many points are in a path. 
quite simple. And you may need to know that because you can say, oh, how many numbers are in there? How many points? Not enough. Add more points, which we've covered in manipulation, or delete some points or whatever. It's just a way to know how many points are in a path. You can use it however you see fit. The next thing you can do is path get point speed. Now for this you need not only the index but also the number for the point. If you remember that starts at zero and increments by one so you just pick whatever point you want and then this will give you the speed of that point. If you remember when we added points in manipulation we could change the speed of each individual point. We can make 125 or 50 percent or whatever you want. This is a way to now check that point. Another thing you can do is check the x and y value of each point. So once again, you're going to have to put in the number for that point, starting with zero, whichever one you want, and it'll get the x and y coordinate in the room. I actually used this in the draw event of my player. This was how I was drawing the lines and the circles for the points are. I used a for loop. I checked... Um, the maximum number of points and if I my for loop didn't reach that number it would do this which was get the x value of the point in question and the y value and then draw that point so that's just one way it's useful I also did the same with getting the point to draw line to line so if you want to pause here and take a look at this there's one way to use both get number and get point x and y but moving on we've got get precision simple it just tells you the precision value for your path between one and eight sometimes you need to know that before you change it because if it's already a number let's say two well you don't need to change it to again you already know that so that's how you use setters and getters together it's really simple it's nothing too complicated and the last three things i want to show you are path get speed now, this is kind of interesting. You're not picking uh, one of the points on your path. You're picking a percentage of the way from the first point to the last point. So, in this case, 0.5 would be 50% of the way. So, if an object were 50% of the way along my path, what would its speed be? And then this would return it. Now, we can also do the same with coordinates. If I get X, I'm getting a coordinate where my player would be 80% of his way along the path. And the same with Y, I can say, hey, where would he be 25% of the way along the path? It sounds a little weird, but I've actually drawn that out. If I go into the draw event of this character, comment this off, I've actually got something called path position. I haven't covered that yet, but I'm about to go into it. This is the position of your player or object along a path in percentage. So if you remember path length, that was the exact length in pixels from the first to last point. Wherever your player is along that path, GameMaker knows the percentage of that distance. And the best way to dis demonstrate it to you is to just run the game and show you what it looks like. So here we are in the room again, and I've got the number zero above my player because he's not on a path, so his percentage is zero. But if I start him on the path, you'll see that he's incrementing as he goes. There he is at 50% of the way through the path. So down here is 50% of the way. There's 100% and back. So that's really useful. So when we use numbers in the setters and getters down here, get X and get Y, this is the X and Y coordinate of an object that's following a path wherever it is along the path in a percentage. Now you've seen what that percentage looks like. And with that, we can actually go into the last category, which is called path variables. There are really only a few path variables to talk about. One is path and action, which allows you to change the end action. If you remember, that's what happens when it gets to the last point. Should it reverse? Should it jump back to number one? Should it stop dead in its tracks? Each number corresponds, I have it written down here, to an action. So zero, end the path. One, jump back to the beginning. Two, keep looping through the path as if the last point's the first point. Or three, reverse. Then we've got path index. So this is the index of the path the calling instance is following. This is something you'd want to store in a variable. 
So I've got what path am I following is path index. So you can talk about it later, use it in some of your other functions, some of your other code. Or you can do path orientation. Remember we were rotating the path before? This is another way to check that angle or set that angle. We've also got the calling instance's position on its path. This I showed you. This is the, that percentage. So what is my position? Um, anywhere between zero and one, it's the percentage of how far it is along that path. Then we've got path previous. So th this one is actually one step ago. So what was my position one step ago? Where this is telling you on this step what its position is. This is on the last step what its position was. Then we've got the scale of the path. We can actually scale it from its center point, making it smaller and larger. And we've got the path speed. This is what speed my object is when I started. If you remember uh, from here, I set its speed to speed, which is four, but I can also check and manipulate it through path speed. Here are a few examples of each one of these variables. So now I hope you know how to not only create paths, but also add them to your objects and manipulate them in the game while it's running.